And when John Warren came to town, John Warren. really got going. Yeah, 1929. 1930. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, uh, that's when we started winning championships. The background of this, <coughs> where all this really started, was at the local YMCA in the junior high school system. You know, there's a junior mm-hmm. high school in Uniontown, Central, and where Lewis and Clark, which isn't anymore, yeah. and then Uppertown. And uh, uh, as the school, and so us kids were just highly competitive. Uh, I went to Lewis and Clark Junior High School in Midtown, uh, and uh, we called the kids from Upper Town. were mostly dominantly all Swedes and Norwegian. We called them a bunch of squareheads, and we called <laughs> the Finns a bunch of commie Finns because they did at one time in the early days. There were a lot of commie Finns there. Really? We call them the Commie Fans, and they call us Lewis and Clark kids in Centertown. They call us the Sissy School. <laughs> so those are all fighting words. So we had a real special right. competition. But the YMCA at that time had two men in there, a secretary and a, and a physical director. Uh, I can't think of the names off the now. Kennedy and Pickett. And Pickett was the secretary. I had, it's all in there. I okay. didn't need a boy. All that, but that's where the real basketball came from. We played for the YMCA and we won a lot of championships in the story in the Northwest and Portland, all over. And, and uh, then the junior high schools, we played, we played there, and then we go down and play mm-hmm. at the Y. And so we we just got to be gym rats down there too. So uh, that's where the basketball really got started, and we won our first championship in 1930 by. Uh, that got us on the way, and we got second in 32, or 31, and then we won it again in 32. And that's when I left, graduated, and uh, things were really good. And you came back and coached? I didn't get to that. Oh, did you come back and coach? Yeah. After I finished my basketball career and graduated at Oregon State, I got hired as coach. And uh, I had two quarters to finish up, but basketball season, I'd usually carry a lighter load because we're gone so much of the time. So when I stayed summer schedule mm-hmm. in summer and fall, <coughs> I had to make up two quarters. So I stayed summer school and then I stayed in fall. I, I got hired in fall, so I knew I had the job as soon as I completed my degree requirement. So I tore down the story and started coaching. You played for Slats? Yeah, I played. Skill, right? Yeah. How was he as a coach? Excellent. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's all kinds of stories about it. I'll tell you the stories of the background of that. I was, Astoria was a strong Oregon town. And I was supposed to go to Oregon, so Sly Skills didn't recruit me <coughs> because it was so cut and dry. Well, then uh, Howard Hobson was mm-hmm. a coach at Oregon. Well, uh, Billy Reinhardt was a coach. But they had worked some kind of a deal that Hobson would leave Benson Tech and go down and coach Southern Oregon. Mm-hmm. which was Southern Oregon Normal at that time. So Hobson come around and talked to me and told me that Billy Reinhardt wanted me to come down to Southern Oregon Normal. We did a lot more competition playing there. Mm-hmm. And then he says, the next year we'll all move up to Oregon. Well, I didn't like that. And I wasn't real high on Hobson. Uh, so I thought the heck with that. So I went down and saw uh, Art Purdy by the Feed and Grain business in the story, a real mm-hmm. staunch Oregon State alumni. So I told Art that I had decided after thinking over, maybe I'd like to go back, go up to Oregon State and play for Slash Gill. Mm-hmm. He says you would, and you pick up the phone, they call Slash right away, and next thing I'm in, Art says to me, uh, could you go to Corvallis now? And I said, sure, I don't do anything right now. So he promptly put me in his car and took me up to Slash. He gave me a full ride, and I ended up at Oregon State. And then Oregon, had, they had the tall furs, that, but that was before the tall furs, right? Well, so. I'll tell you the background on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Bergstrom and I played at Oregon State. We played mm-hmm. on the state championship together in 32. Mm-hmm. And we, we, so we played together at Oregon State. No, I'll tell you a story about that. I see that was in 34, 35 when they won the state championship. <coughs> and uh, that was Wally Johansson. Right, Bobby and, Annette. And Bobby Annette. And... Uh, uh, Chase Harper, uh-huh. Earl Sanders, and Troy Little People. They were all that group in 34 35. And uh, 
So uh, Hobson wanted them real badly in Oregon. And so the Oregon people approached John Warren and told him, if you will bring all those Astoria kids to Oregon, we'll mm -hmm. hire you as freshman coach. Mm -hmm. So the whole, it, it worked. The whole party and math went to <laughs> Oregon. And it paid off for them. Yeah, 39. years later, they won the national title with those kids. And Hanson played the, played the regular. And Sanders and, uh, and uh, Sarkla were the first line subs in. Right. And uh, people, <coughs> people played, but uh, when they went back to play in the Nationals, people had wrecked his ankle and he couldn't Yeah, I got hurt. So uh, Everett McDealy took his place. He was from oh. Franklin High School, I think, in Portland. So he had to take his place, those mm -hmm. poor old people. Was it not? Otherwise, <laughs> he had five stories to stand out. It was absolutely unbelievable. There's one story in the magazine after one of the families that they were telling about that great Astoria team. It's a little town of that story where all they did was catch salmon and play basketball. That's <laughs> what the story team was. <coughs> yeah, it was a it was a real great time there before the war, up to the war. There, so. So what are your other uh, favorite stories? Huh? What are your other favorite stories from? Uh, well, did you know Rose Seaborg? He was the superintendent of the schools of that story, and uh, he was a he was one of my ball players. And he was a good one. He's an all stater mm -hmm. He played good ball at Oregon too after the war, when he got out of the service. So, uh, uh, Roy was a, a sophomore, first year at mm -hmm. uh, for me at Story House, and Roy was a very uh, impressionable boy, and uh, oh, he. Uh, yeah, he was a funny one. So anyway, he just, oh, God, he put on acts, you know, out there on the floor. And this one time he got bumped, and he's just a sophomore. He got bumped and landed on the floor and laid there just sprawled out. <laughs> so I, I thought, that's funny. He didn't get hit that hard. So I went out on the floor, and, and uh, right away, of course, all the people were so worried about little Roy. And so I looked down at him, and Roy was like, he turned his head and opened his eyes, looked at me, and then turned away right away. Said his eyes. I, I kicked him in the rear end. I kicked him hard, too, as he's laying it. I kicked him in the side of his rear end. I said, Seaberg, get out. And I turned and walked off the floor, and I looked back. He got up and went ahead and played. And he never pulled that stuff again. So that's yeah. one story. And I'll tell you another word one on Roy Seaberg. Uh, did you know uh, uh, Ward Paul Danius? Oh, they just know. Uh -huh. uh, he played for me, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, you'll get out of it. All right. We were playing, I, maybe I have this in the book, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we were playing Eugene High School in the semifinals of the state tournament. And uh, up at the, we were playing in the old mm -hmm. uh, gym at, uh, at Willamette University. Okay. At upstairs. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so we had the ball out of bounds, and, and uh, we had a two-point lead. We had the ball out of bounds in the, in the front court, in Eugene's front court. And uh, I, I kind of relaxed on the bench. So we got two points, four point lead, and we had the ball out of bounds. So I thought, we can't get hurt here. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what happened, uh, I know uh, Eugene, uh, well, on Roy, what Roy did then, was our two point lead. Roy took the ball out of bounds. Ward was standing about 12 feet back from him and to our, in the, over the center line in our area. And uh, as Ward has told me later, he says, I was telling Roy, give me the ball, give me the ball. He didn't have anybody on him. Instead, Roy, in four seconds ago, Roy looked all over and he looked her up there in the balcony and he wound up and he threw the ball as far up in the balcony corner as he could. <laughs> and Kathy King was the referee. He called a technical foul on Seaboard. I thought, oh, my God, they'll get the free throw, and then they get the ball out of bounds. <laughs> we are in trouble again, and here I was all relaxed on the bench. Well, as it turned out, Eugene missed the free throw. But they got the ball out of bounds. And when they threw the ball on Rudy Lovell, I don't know if you knew him. He was red yeah. He was one hell of an athlete. Uh, but anyway, uh, Rudy stole the ball on the inbound, so we got it. So I ran out on the floor, and I grabbed the hold of Roy Seaberg, and I... I says, Roy, you're an all-state basketball player, and you understand this game. What possessed you to pull a dumb stunt like that? 
He said, gosh, coach, he said, I thought it would take him more than four seconds to find the ball. <laughs> Imagine that. Now, that's a couple on Roy.